What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at an amplifier from Audio Control they sent over my way. The LC5.1300. Here you can see the guitar pick that's included for adjusting your gains. Very nice. Of course, Allen's key. And then we have the manual. We're going to talk about those settings a little bit later. Let's talk about the different LC series amplifiers. Six channel, a five channel, a four channel, and two mono blocks. And again, we're looking at the LC5.1300, which is their only five channel amplifier at this time. Now the outside of the amplifier here has got a lot of different settings and adjustments. We're gonna to get to those individually here in just a minute and talk about each one. But let's talk about where the connections are and what about the amplifier. On the top here is a beauty panel, which covers up all the different options so you don't have to worry about your grandma going in and adjusting your bass, you know, cause she's gonna to wanna to crank it up. So uh, this beauty panel here covers up the top. There's four screws that hold it in, nice and firm. This is a nice heavy duty panel here. But you also see there are four 30 amp fuses for 120 amps of big dummy math fusing. There are one O inputs. The manual says you can either use one alt or four gauge. I would go one alt just to give you all that extra current that you may need. As far as RCAs go, there are six different RCA ends. You can switch that and do just two ends if you need to. There are eight inputs for the high level speaker inputs. This gives you some flexibility because it actually sums all the different frequencies together if you have a, you know, many different signals coming in. And there's also an ACR1 remote level control. Now this is not included, this is a separate option. The ACR1 uh, base remote or level remote and you will have to purchase this separately. It does give you different options based on how you set up the crossover settings. It may be a full system gain or it can be a subwoofer gain depending on how you have that set up. But it does use the RJ11 style connector or RJ12 so it does give you that nice firm connection. And as far as the four channel mode speaker outputs, those are 12 gauge. And then the subwoofer channel has eight gauge. So you can hook in larger speakers if you need to or speaker wire I should say. Let's talk about some of the adjustments on the amp. We have the power protection LEDs. We have a signal sense off or on. High level adjustment, that's if you're using speaker level inputs. Then we have a crossover setting for high, off, or low in a corresponding frequency. Then you can switch it between mono and stereo. And then we have a gain to match for the low level inputs. Channels three and four give you some additional summing for channels one and two if you just need to use two RCAs. You have additional controls for the crossover. If you turn it off, that has no crossover. If you set it to bandpass, you can use a mid range. Or if you use high pass, you can use it for a component set or something like that. There's also a stereo mono switch and also a need more gain control because you know we all need that. Channels three and four you can sum as well. You have the AccuBase enabled or disabled with a threshold and a level. Low pass crossover frequency from 300 down to 30 hertz. Another need more gain control. Then we have clipping indicators for the source as well as each individual channel. As far as dimensions go, 12 inches by 7.95 inches. And as far as the height, it's only 2.1 inches. So not very tall of an amplifier, easy to hide. Now the features is configurable five or three channel amplifier. It's rated four times 100 watts plus one times 300 at four ohms, four times 200 plus one times 500 at two ohms. Or if you bridge the four channel mode, you get 400 watts times two plus 500 watts times one. Now it's time to fire up the good old SMD DeMore Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can test the RMS power output. Before we do that, make sure you check the link in the video description for some Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up, because I know you guys like to see these tests. First up, we're gonna do the four channel mode. We're gonna bridge the amp at eight ohms. This is rated 200 by two, which equates to 100 watts by four at four ohms. Now right off the bat, I did not like the way Audio Control used these two interconnections for left plus and right minus. You can see how close the speaker wires are. This is 12 gauge speaker wire. I really wish they'd use the far left and the far right connection like most amps do. So check on that Audio Control and get back with me. First up, certified here at eight ohms, rated 200 by two. And yes, we got that easily, 250 and 240 right at 14.48. Let's reset the dyno here for the uncertified test. This takes us up to the clipping point. 
we're using the one kilohertz mode and all the channels on the amplifier are loaded. 254, 241 does the power easily. Now let's try the dynamic test here. Right about the same, 256, 243, 14.54. Now I'm gonna show the efficiency numbers here coming up and also show you the four ohm equivalent measurement which we received, we measured about 250 watts by two which equates to 125 by four. We add up all the channels, we still got 85% efficiency, that's very good. Now next up we're gonna do the four ohm bridge mode where the amplifier is rated 400 watts by two, which equates to 200 by four at two ohms. And certified test takes us up to 1% THD, where again we're using a one kilohertz track here. And as you can see, we easily got the rated power 478 and 451 at right at 14.4 volts, so very good. Now let's rewire the dyno here for the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. We do expect to get a little bit more on these with the same amount of voltage. Let's see what we get. Wow, almost 500 watts, 490, 463. And sometimes people ask, hey, what about the difference in the channels? Decibel wise, you would never know that difference in the numbers. Remember this amplifier has a lot of different smaller amplifiers inside of it, so you should not expect those numbers to be exactly the same. They should be close enough though that you can't hear the difference, and these are close enough. Dynamically, 499 and 472 right at 14.51, so that's good. And we also ran the certified test using the 40 hertz track just to simulate running at kind of a full range instead of running at the higher end see what kind of power we got. We still got good numbers, 487 and 471. So well above that rated power of 400 watts by two. And we measured 480 by two or approximately 240 by four where it's rated 200 by four. So that's excellent. As far as efficiency goes, 74%. That's very good at that particular ohm load. All right, now let's try the sub channel. And again, we have all the other channels loaded as well. At four ohms, it's rated 300 watts at 14.4 volts. Let's try the certified test first, which takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. This is the clean test, in other words. You big dummy. 361, right at 14.4. So again, nicely above the rated power, getting more than what you pay for. Let's reset this for the uncertified mode, which will take us up to the clipping point of the amplifier. Voltage has dropped just a little bit more here, but we still got good numbers, over 350 watts, actually 360, 14.26. Now let's try the amp dynamically on the sub channel. Reset the dyno here. Set up the burst tone, track number one. Here we go, 353 watts at 14.24 volts. That's good numbers. All right, now let's try two ohms on the sub channel. It's rated 500 watts at 14.4. Again, we have the other four channels loaded down as well to simulate all channels being loaded. Certified, look at this, 600. And 62 watts at 14.5 volts, rated 500 watts at 14.4. That is some good extra power for your money. Everybody likes to get a little bit more than they paid for, right? Yeah, I don't have no complaints about that. Uncertified up to clipping. Ooh, yeah, we had to get past that triple six. We got 669 at 14.44. So yeah, boy. All right, now let's try dynamic, sending a 40 hertz burst tone into the amp. 672 watts at two ohms, 14.52. Next up, we're gonna do something not recommended by audio control, 1.33 ohms on the sub channel. It's not rec recommended for anything under two ohms, but we're gonna try it anyway. Here we go, certified test. What? 872, 14.38. Engineers are screaming at me right now. 
saying don't run this amp below two ohms don't run this amp below two ohms okay i won't do it <laughs> uncertified up to clipping Ooh, we getting close to 900 eight oh we got 906 14.32 dynamic 1.33 ohms can we get an oh yes over 900 919 watts Oop, 922 keeps going up can it go anymore 922 at 14.4 1.33 ohms the results yes we got about 20 percent overrated if you look here at the stereo the four channel mode we got about 20 percent over in every single test which is impressive in addition to the sub channel 361 662 872 easily over the rated power so that's awesome this amplifier performed extremely well in the dyno next up you guys all want to know do it bump dough let's find out here's the audio control lc5.1300 i have uh four channels bridged to two and then I have the subwoofer channel going to the four Savard 8s. These are wired at 1 ohm. The amp is not designed or made to go into 1 ohm, not warranted any of that. So do that at your own risk. We're just going to, we're doing some extended testing here. Let's try out Ari De, De Niro, that Mexican thing. Here we go. some luck witch So if you can't tell, the amplifier sounded very good with the speakers and the subwoofer. Now next up, let's check out what's inside. But before we do that, we want to look at the top lid removal according to the instructions. And it says there's two screws to remove. There's actually four because there's two at the back as well. None of these are captive screws. Um, that's kind of a bummer because you're going to lose these if you're not careful. So make sure you take all four because I only took the front two off and I couldn't get the cover off. And that was when I found out that there's actually two additional screws on the back. So that's one change I wish audio control would make would be make those captive if you're going to have those extra screws on the back so they don't fall apart. Now I took apart all the other screws of the amplifier here to be able to take this cover off so we can see what's inside. And we're going to slide this top plate off so that we can take a closer look at the amplifier guts. First thing we'll notice is that there is an additional wire connected here. Here you can see it coming off the little small daughter board and it goes to this uh, strip here. And this is actually an LED, it's a blue LED uh, strip. Gives some uh, blue lights to the amplifier to make it look cool. Here's the inside. Again, these are bespoke design amplifiers. They're designed by audio control. You're not gonna find another amplifier that looks like this. It's Rev 2.05, this one in particular, made in 2020. And again, you can see all the daughter boards standing up here for the inputs and the crossover controls. And there's the RCA inputs. I wish they used the Tiffany style or panel mount RCAs. But um, yeah, here's the guts again. You can see all the different connections here and the potentiometers for the different level controls, crossover controls, etc. And there on the left side, you can see the transformer. You can see the capacitors there as well and uh, some additional resistors and a bunch of little daughter boards all over the place on this amp 
but it's very well laid out and obviously put well together by audio control. Now let's talk about the good stuff. Obviously a measure 20% above rated power, has the flexibility for two, four, or six channel RCA inputs. Also eight channels of high level inputs that are summing. The crossover flexibility, you can use it in two, two way mode or three way mode. One O inputs has great efficiency and it has a unique design designed by audio control. There's even more good stuff. Clipping indicators, all connections on one side, compact size for the amount of power and the five or three channel flexibility makes it very cool. Now things could be better. It's not rated to handle below two ohms on the sub channel. The placement of the bridging channels, I've already talked about this, I do not like it. The ACR1 base remote or level control is not included. That top panel removal, I've talked about that as well. It has four screws, it's a little bit of a pain. And no Tiffany or panel mount RCAs. Overall, I really like this amplifier from Audio Control. It sounds extremely good. Has plenty of power for most people, you know, who need a five channel amplifier, who just need a few hundred watts on the subwoofer channel. Very flexible as far as inputs go for using it with factory systems. Overall, the amplifier built very well. It seems like a very good amplifier. So thanks as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, you guys are my boys, right? You promised me that you won't tell audio control that I'm running this five channel amp, the sub channel at one ohm, because it's only rated to handle two ohm load. So one ohm is like half of what's really supposed to handle. If anything else, just pop the fuses, that's fine. It's got four 30 amp fuses. Those with big dummy math, that's 120 amps of fusing. You will probably see more than 120 amps here. The reason for that is the fuses can pass more current for a short amount of time before they will pop. Here we go, one ohm, sub channel, 40 hertz. What? 1,034 watts. We didn't get close to popping the fuses yet either. I've got to ask Chris at Audio Control, are they sandbagging us here? Is this really a one ohm stable amp with no sweat? Hmm. What? Eleven hundred and thirty-six watts at fourteen point three volts. Woo.